welcome to the um, the second. Yes, the last one was a pilot episode, and this is the official second episode of the the Mr. Courgette and, and DBSB Chili, chili and zombie, zombie Experience. Catchy. Well, the mm. chili part of this evening is uh, this is one of Mr. Frizz's chilies that he gave me a long time ago. And it's been sitting in my fridge waiting for me to do something with it. Extreme close up. Yeah. Oh. So we're going to be using this in our coleslaw. And then we're having. Um, Maruga mushroom burgers. Maruga mushroom burgers, which we'll be using uh, Maruga mayhem. Thank you. Uh, oh, I've got the end bit. So have I. Oh. Controversial double ender. <laughs> Um, so uh, yes, this is this is this chili. Do a quick test. So Mr. Frizz, Mr. Frizz, lovely. Mmm, sweet. Yep, so fruity, um, mm. bonnety, scorpiony type flavour. Mmm. With that, I mean, um, we have to ask Mr. Frizz. They seem to be a hybrid of some description. I think they're a bit Looking weird. Looking at the batch, they're sort of um, bonnety in the middle with a tail. Mmm. Anything born with a tail goes well in my book, but very, very nice, very, very fruity, mm, very yeah. strong flavour, very yeah. strong heat right up front, and it, it's a builder as well. Yeah, it's sort of, I get on the sides of my tongue. Mm, I'm getting on the roof of my mouth and the sides of the tongue as yeah, well. So, diagonal. It's a diagonal chilli. Yeah. I yeah, think, that's very nice. That's it? Yeah. So more of that to go in the coleslaw. Yeah. Might put a couple in. And then Maruga paste to go in the mushroom Maruga burgers. paste, yeah. Nick and Derry's Maruga paste. Which Here's is, one we prepared uh, earlier. Maruga mayhem. Extreme close up. That's to go in our portobello mushroom burgers. Oh, lovely. <laughs> So this is the Nick and Darry's Maruga Mayhem. We've just spread it on two portobello mushrooms, as you'll see on the video, and I'm going to lick the spoon. Very marugery. Um, I think there's probably a lot of mushroom on that spoon as well as the maruga paste. Um, it does seem to be mostly maruga. <laughs> um, very very nice. Very Moorish and building quite a lot. Maruga mushroom burgers oh. and um, um, mixed chili coleslaw, yes. which is Mr. Frizz is um, hybrid chilies, which we believe are somewhere between a bonnet and a scorpion of some description. That, but is. Mr. Frizz can clear that up for us somewhere down the oh, line. Yeah, and paprika wedges. So, um, a dunk and a go. Yeah. Healthy dunk. Healthy dunk. Didn't get any chilli in my... No. I think we're doing a chilli coleslaw that's going to be full of surprises. So I think it is going to be a coleslaw surprise. We're going to go... Whoop! No! Mmm! Mmm! Warmness. Mmm. A little bit. Oh, there's a little bit of heat there. That's very nice. Very nice. But... but I mean, we've chopped up a couple of the, the hybrid chilies into the coleslaw batch and... Mm. Oh yeah, got you can feel there. a little bit of a kick coming through there. It's very nice. It's sort of you've got the obviously the sweetness of the the mayo and the yogurt in the coleslaw, um, with the tartness probably isn't the right word, but you know the the fruitiness and the the bite, if you will, of the chili. Hmm, that does work for a chili that you can eat raw. That's a mm. good suggestion. Mm. Chuck it in a homemade coleslaw. Almost rhymes that. Mm. So, nice. we're, so we're basically, we're putting off the the maruga. I think um, we should do it. Yeah. So, 
we've taken some of the aforementioned Maruga paste and I'm taking out the stalk of the portico mayhem. I'm taking out the stock of the portobello mushrooms and spread round the maruga paste inside the mushroom and fried them up. A little bit of cheese, a bit, bit of, of a bun. leaf. Happy days, give it a go. Mm. There's your maruga. That's good. Mm. It's the initial kick's not as big as I was, I, was, I was thinking. From when I've tried it before, I got kind of a bit scared from having it raw. Mm. It's infused nicely into the mushroom. Um, you're still getting that fruitiness. You're still getting a bit of a burn. Mm. But, but it's, yeah. But you're getting a lot of flavour in there as well. That's good. You can still taste the mushroom. You can still taste maruga. Mm. It's a cavalcade of flavour on your tongue. Mm. But I believe the word cavalcade was invented in the Middle Ages. Mm. Which is handy because... The zombie film we're watching today is Night of the Dead. Tell us more about Night of the Dead, Mr. DBSB. Well, I bought this because it was in a very shiny case. <laughs> this is always a very good reason to buy things. Kids, buy things because they're shiny. And, um, and then looking at it more, it, it does look like a production company went, hmm, what's popular on telly? Hmm, Walking Dead, that's popular. Hmm. What else is popular? Game of Thrones. That's popular. Well, if we were to put them together, we'd get the world's most popular film. Straight to DVD. And we're back. We're back. Night of the Dead. Well, it's got a nice shiny package. Mm. I mean, the package was all promise. Yeah. I mean, what, you know, what not to love about, like, shiny, medieval, big font face... Zombies, it, it promises so much. I mean, how much did I miss by being asleep? Not a lot. Yeah, I drifted off. Um, I'm gonna say, um, I've seen a lot of zombie films. I don't know about you, but yeah. I'm pretty disappointed. Um, yeah, I, I, I could see potential in the idea of this, of like swashbuckling knights and holy grails were in it but I'd what we actually got the best bit was some flaring nostrils the flaring nostrils were some of the best flaring mm. nostrils I have ever seen perfectly captured I think it, you'd say yeah and a bendy sword the bendy sword is hilarious the, um, I think the the amount of jump cuts and was just distracting. Jump cuts yeah. when used right is fine, but yeah. But just... then again, that is something that's uh, with the BBC's recent uh, Robin Hood series. I couldn't watch it because the amount of jump cuts in it. So it's not just something of a, a, a low budget film. I, I I was I was going into this wanting more. Mm. When 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 the film started. It did feel like you'd just suddenly been dropped into a story that's been developing. We didn't have any real well, character development, so we didn't really care about any of the characters. It felt like the second part of a three-part series. Yeah. You were dumped in the middle, you were left in oblivion at the end, and it's all. I think the best way I can describe this is post-apocalyptic film based around medieval, like, medieval iconography, with accents like all of the cast were in the streets. Yeah, or Snatch, or... or something of that. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a thing that I often find with a lot of um, British-made films, is that they suffer from TV mini-series issues. In that they'd be really good. I think this could have been really good if, if it, it was been better. A three or four part series on BBC Two, and then you could build up the characters and you'd care. I didn't really care. There was a bit of gratuitous no. uh, priest on on Eastern female, European maiden. East, yeah, Eastern European maiden sex. And 
that's, you know... To boil it down, with a zombie film, you really want to have a little bit of humour, you want to have a bit of gore, but when characters are dying, you either want to laugh because it's hilarious, or you want to feel empathy for them. And this was just, you were happy to see them dead because it was one less person to yeah. cringe over. I mean, you know, with the last film, Juan of the Dead, yeah. again, another cheap budget. I think probably Juan of the Dead might yeah. have had a bit of a bigger budget. I want to say they had lesser budget than this. This had more CGI than Juan of the Dead. Yeah, it's, you know, that's another, another cheap budget film, but it kept, it kept going, it kept you engaged with the characters... There was I no didn't, character development here. I didn't really feel a lot for the characters. I, you know, I didn't even feel a lot for the zombies in this. You know, sometimes you can... I'm putting with, this down. With a good zombie film. Yeah, put it down. Uh, yeah. Cut off its head. Yes, but, yeah, that's it. That's the end of the advertising for that film. Yeah. Please, so, please, please watch a better zombie film. Yeah, there are lots of them out there. As shown by our many subsequent episodes... Hopefully. Hopefully. <laughs> Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.